The Skull Confection origin is based off of the themings of the deep dark that is coming in the next Minecraft update. This origin is almost completely original on its own aside from a select few abilities. To use this origin, you will not only need to be playing Minecraft 1.18+, plus, you also need origins, origin extra and keybinds, extra origins, and pinnacle for this origin to operate. Either way, after you guys hit the like button down below, let's get into the actual data pack origin itself. Moving into our first ability, we have the Vibration O Location Ascents. You see the world through vibrations. Now, this is the one ability that I have seen used before. Now, the user of this origin or the creator of this origin may not have purposely yoinked it, may have created it all on their own, but I have seen it in use before with another similar origin based upon the Warden, I think it was. I'll probably quickly back check right now. Correction, it's based on the Wardling origin. There's one I've seen this one before, an origin that I covered five months ago now, but it doesn't exactly hurt the ability of this all the same. It's still a fairly unique one that I haven't really seen too often, as instead of you seeing Minecraft in the normal way, you are pretty much blind aside from the outlinings of a majority of objects, plus the actual mobs and other bits and pieces similar along those lines. Now, it doesn't exactly give you too much of a unique colors and all these other bits and pieces, but basically you can still tell what the world is. It's just going to be a lot less colorful. It's going to be black most of the time with some outlinings, and that's about it there. And hey, if you're enjoying this video thus far, I'd highly suggest that you hit the subscribe button down below as I do Origins content every single week as well as more general general Minecraft mining content twice a week. Either way, subscribe. There might also be some live streams coming soon. Anyway, let's continue on with this video. Moving on to our next ability, we've got the I Like the Darkness ability. If you're at a very deep level, you'll gain consistent food. The basis idea behind this ability is that you can have regenerative hunger when you're down low enough inside of the world. Now, from what I can gather, it's roughly about Y level zero and below, you'll start having this regenerative hunger, basically whenever you're in any form of deep slate based caves. Now, another thing to keep in mind here here is that this regenerative hunger does not outpace typical damage ticks from let's say fire or lava or other things on those lines so you won't be able to out heal or out hunger certain damage disadvantages but it can be very useful in a situation where you run out of food whilst you're underground digging about and doing your mining so you won't exactly have to worry about that as much as you'll be regenerating hunger at a somewhat steady rate I'd say about like usage it ticks down a little bit then it goes back up and it's kind of a nice race not too fast that is overpowered but it's not so slow that it's absolutely useless either. Moving into our next ability, you've got 100% Shulk. You make noises of infection when you are killed slash damaged. Now overall, these additional noises are pretty damn quiet in comparison to the normal typical damage noise that you get because this origin doesn't exactly get rid of those typical damage noises as you still hear those noises such as when you're burning, take fall damage or other things on those lines. Just instead of the typical normal health damage noise that you get alongside of it, it's more quieter Shulk based noise which is it's kind of similar to what you hear whenever you play around with those wireless shulk things th those type of noises they're very faint and they're not exactly going to do too much to your gameplay experience it's just going to have a little bit of atmosphere addition if you can hear these noises moving into our next ability we've got velvet paws your foot sips don't cause any vibrations which could otherwise be picked up by nearby life form this ability is interesting that is the basis i can give you at the start of this one the idea behind this is basically a majority of mobs won't be able to detect your existence unless you hit them. When you hit them, they will start attacking you guaranteed. And if you hit one zombie, all the zombies in the area will start chasing you. So that is definitely something that I'd keep in mind at all times. So don't try and hit mobs, especially zombies, because zombies have this weird communication thing in Minecraft where they can pretty much summon all zombies in the general vicinity to come and take you down kind of deal. But one of the weird quirks to this ability is whenever you pause and unpause whilst near a mob, there is a slight chance that this mob will become active on you even though it's not particularly meant to when you've just simply unpaused the game. This is probably the most interesting part of it all and will only ever do for the one that's right next to you. It doesn't exactly affect all the ones in the general area. Even when I did it with a zombie, one zombie was chasing me but all the other ones were ignoring my existence but the moment I hit the zombie that was chasing me, all the other zombies in the general area came and reappeared on my radar and started to go after me. This ability is all around just a bit of an oddity. It's interesting, it's a pretty cool ability but there's also some hidden quirks when it comes down to it. Moving into your first active ability, we have Vibrato Protection. You reinforce the protection to generate temporary shields. This is using your Tenerary Key. When you use your Tenerary Ability Key, you will bring up a bunch of armor bars on top of you. Now, it is mimicking either Diamond or Neverite Armor. I'm not 100% sure because I have no idea how to tell toughness and how toughness works because I'm not too knowledgeable in that type of thing. But it essentially mimics the highest end of armor you can get in default Minecraft, meaning that you will pretty much protect off of that damage and that damage a 
alone. It doesn't give you anything like resistance or anything like that. So that's of course something to keep in mind there, but it gives you like a bit of armor for about five to 10 seconds and then it disappears off. And the cooldown is about 30 seconds, give or take. Moving on to small but dangerous, just because you're a small does not that mean that you cannot be a danger. Just, this is kind of a touch misleading. All it is is just a funny way of saying that, ha, you're tiny. In reality, you don't even exist mainly. You're just a bunch of particle effects, but yeah, you get the point, you're small. Moving into your secondary ability, you have the Vibro Locator. You generate a pulse that vibrates and reveals enemies up to 40 blocks away from your current location. Now this ability kind of works in tandem with a passive ability we'll go over in a moment, but the basic idea behind this, whenever you use your secondary ability key, all the colors slash vibrations on your screen will disappear and you'll become a shade of black and all the mobs within a 40 block range will be outlined with a white line. Now you can tell if your other passive ability is kind of coming into effect is when they're highlighted with a blue line and they're entirely visible. Another core quirk here that I want to bring up yet again, it's kind of like again with the whole zombie things, zombies can somehow detect a bunch of these abilities in you. Unlike a majority of other things, a majority of the time most mobs won't ever acknowledge your existence unless you hit them and even when you hit them they'll hit you once and then they'll most likely get disinterested if you walk away from them. Zombies again can sense this ability. If you use your secondary ability too closely to a zombie, all of a sudden that zombie will be starting to go after you and of course, as all zombies work, will summon about a million other zombies in the area to come and chase you down and then of course kill you. So be very wary whenever you use this ability to not use it near a zombie, otherwise a zombie might chase you down. Anyhow, moving into our next ability, you got resistance from the deep. Falling more than five blocks will hurt you. Remember, you only have five hearts. Now typically in normal Minecraft, it'll be about four blocks is when you start taking fall damage, but giving you just an extra block of leeway in order to take said fall damage. That passive ability kind of works with our second passive ability that we're going through here called Infectious Life. You are a deteriorated being. Your life is five points less than the life of a human being. Basically, you've got half the health of the average Minecraft player, so when you do take damage, it's going to hurt a lot more because it's going to be a higher proportion of your health than normal. So that extra resistance to fall damage is definitely going to prove itself far more than useful in a majority of situations. Moving into our next passive ability, and I actually mentioned this one a little bit earlier, it's the Sixth Sense ability. Due to your way of life, you can simply, you can temporarily see blue outlines of entities while they're within 10 blocks. Now, here's one of the big things that you need to keep in mind at at all times, unless you use your secondary ability, any form of mobs that are further than 10 blocks away from you will not be visible to you on screen whatsoever. You are They either need to be within 10 blocks or you need to use your secondary ability to see them. If you don't do that, they are completely non-existent on your screen. So just be very wary of that. You might run into a huge mobs of zombies or something that might potentially be chasing you. Move into our next ability, you've got experience food. You're getting experience to regenerate the food of your food bar, although you can also eat common food to regenerate saturation, as experience points do not award saturation points. Basically speaking, anytime you pick up any form of experience orbs, if you have missing hunger in your hunger bar, it will actually help replenish that first before going into your experience point bar. But the con of this is it will not give you any form of saturation points with this boost, so you'll pretty much be eating right back into that hunger bar very quickly, unless you eat some actual food that gives you some saturation. This doesn't not affect how you eat food though, you can still eat food normally and it still gives you all of its typical benefits. Side note, a weird bug that that does occur with this origin is whenever you have any form of experience points, it's kind of always consistently getting drained. Meaning you can never really hold any form of experiencing points, meaning you can't really enchant anything because, well, your experience points immediately drain down to zero whenever it stops going up. Moving into our next ability, you've got Born Among Stones. You can change the state of materialization to cut through anything that is rocky material. Now going off of what Origin says about this ability, it's meant to be a toggle with your primary ability, but when I start to use it, I'm not quite sure if anything's actually happening. Going off of my best guesstimation on the abilities of this Origin, one of the ones that isn't exactly explained is your ability to mine a majority of items with extreme speed. You have a certain level of haste that can pretty much mine things at let's say the level of an unenchanted diamond tool, meaning that you can mine through stone, sand and all that pretty damn fast, but because you're doing it with your bare hands, anything that requires a certain tool or tool level or and actually drop the items for you so you still will need let's say pickaxes of all sorts in order to go up the tiers and get the items in order to actually craft a better pickaxes to mine the actual ores and stuff along those lines but other than that you can pretty much mine anything with some quick speed with your bare hands putting you in a pretty decent situation if your pickaxe breaks. 
But even then, this ability kind of gets wasted in a majority of situations when you consider the fact that your next passive ability, the sneaky ability, the Shulk does not suffocate between walls, allowing you to phase through the world and actually climb up and get out of any form of situations. If sandstone or something on those lines, if sand falls on top of you, you can easily just breathe. You don't have to worry about it. If your pickaxe breaks when you're in the middle of mining and you need to get back up to the surface, you can just go onto the wall. You don't have to worry about the wall being a thing to break. You don't have to worry about your tools breaking when you're on the ground. You can easily just phase through things and get out of a situation that you're in. Okay, a quick and very important correction to make of those past two abilities. The sneaky ability allows you to face towards stone-based objects. You cannot face through things such as dirt, sand, and other things along those lines, but only stone-based objects, and your primary ability will toggle the ability to go through these objects or not. Which is a very key distinction that I want to put in here, but if you toggle this ability when you're inside of the wall, it will give you the screen as if you're suffocating, but you're not actually taking any damage, or is the effect actually take giving you the damage on screen? You just see the block in your screen. Fate. Anyhow, moving into our next ability, you've got high reflexes. Like Shulk, you can quickly double tap A, W, S, D in order to move to dash in that direction. Not gonna lie, when it comes to this ability in particular, the description does not really do well at explaining on it. Basically, if you double tap any form of movement key, you will dash in said direction that that movement key will take you. But I don't think you're gonna exactly find too much use out of it going forward. It will be pretty useful when you're wanting to quickly dash with side to side. Definitely very useful those situations but moving forwards or backwards won't exactly find too much of a use from you mainly because it gives you a small dash forward but then after that if you're already going at sprint speed this does pretty much null and void the actual ability itself it doesn't exactly work too well when you're in the air either so i guess that's its own thing and hey since you made it this far into this video i want to just let you in on a little bit of a secret if you press the f4 button when you're playing as this origin you can actually toggle the vibration visibility effect this does not remove any of the other abilities so mobs will still not spawn or become visible unless you're within 10 blocks of their range But you can actually remove that annoying vibration effect if you're not a fan of it for survival mode Either way if you did enjoy this origin I highly suggest you check out the Wardling origin which the video for that should be on screen now Go check out that go leave a like go subscribe and goodbye